to get us started. We've been focused on inheritance, creating subclasses with specialized behavior. As we mentioned previously, Java supports only single inheritance, not um, multiple inheritance. So a subclass can only extend a single superclass. That said, there are times when we want classes to support other types of behaviors um, and perhaps unrelated behaviors. And the way we can do that is through a Java interface. Okay. A Java interface um, has some similarities and some differences to regular classes. Uh, but you can think of it as a Java interface is a set of public methods. Every method is public. Um, and every method is abstract, meaning an interface has no implementation for any method in it. It simply declares those methods. Okay. Think of an interface as like um, a promise that you have to fulfill. So when a class says it implements an interface, it's promising to actually implement each and every method in that interface. Okay. This is useful and this is powerful um, because it helps us decouple classes, meaning they don't directly reference each other. Um, and therefore it helps pr promote reusability and extensibility. It allows us to develop our own classes um, that implement interfaces and basically plug them into existing code that already exists. Um, and we're gonna see several examples of that over the next week. We use the word interface um, in a couple different ways when it comes to technology. So we're talking about software interfaces today, but it's analogous to hardware interfaces. And I think a USB device is a great example to help us understand the power of interfaces and why it's useful. We call it literally the USB interface. So the USB interface is defined by a standards organization who says that, hey, here's how USB works. Here's the shape of the plug. Here's where the electrical connectors are. Here's what signals are on every little pin. Okay. And what's powerful about that is that laptop and Chromebook and desktop manufacturers can put USB ports in their devices that support the interface and ship those products to billions of people. Um, and then all of these other companies can come up with their new, innovative, creative USB devices well after the computer has been built. And they know that their special new fancy mask or mouse or uh, VR headset or printer or whatever can just plug into the desktop. It's just gonna work because it supports the interface. If we didn't have interfaces, imagine if you wanted to use your new printer you had to buy a whole new computer because it didn't have the right type of plug in it, right? That would be a nightmare. Um, so interfaces let us basically develop new things that can plug in and interact with and interface with things that already exist. Hugely powerful in terms of hardware and software as well. Here are some differences between interfaces and classes. An interface cannot have any instance variables. It can have some constants, but we're not gonna really worry about that so much. Every method in an interface is abstract by default. We don't need to even use the abstract keyword, it's implied. You may re remember that abstract means there's no implementation, there's no curly brackets after the method header. There's just a semicolon there. Every method in an interface is public. We don't have to say that either, it's implied. And an interface has no constructor because we can't make a new object from an interface because it has no code. Um, so there's no need for a constructor. You will not, in the context of this class, be put in the position of having to decide if something should be done through implementing an interface or creating a subclass. Um, but I did just wanna give you a couple like high level tips on that, even though it's a little bit beyond the scope here. Um, a class can implement many interfaces. A class can extend only one super class. Those are the rules. So how do we use this to our advantage when we're designing software? We tend to use interfaces for shared behaviors between otherwise unrelated objects, okay? Here's an example that we're gonna look at today. Um, being able to compare two objects of the same class 
is useful, okay? But that's something that many different classes would want to do, right? Not just one specific class. So that's a shared behavior, being able to compare something that is needed by otherwise unrelated objects. We might want to compare the values in um, a person class, as well as like a coin class, as well as a bank account class. Those are unrelated classes, um, but they have the shared behavior of wanting to be comparable. Okay? We use inheritance for specialized behaviors um, and attributes of the superclass, right? So that's why um, we create the fill in question class. That was specialized behavior of the question class. Or you all created the ATM card class because that has specialized behaviors compared to the card class. So that's the when we use one over the other. In the context of this class, you can always be told what to do, like whether you're doing an interface or inheritance. The interface we're going to start with today um, is the comparable interface. It's built into the Java standard library. It's super simple. It has exactly one method in it called compare to. It takes a single parameter, which is the object to which we're comparing this object, and it returns an integer value um, that is either less than zero, greater than zero, or equal to zero. We've seen this before. The string class implements the comparable interface. That's what the compare to method is on the string class. So we, we've called the compare to method before. Today we're going to write it ourselves. Um, so let's do that. Let's write, this will take just a moment. Let's write, let's implement an interface. Um, and that'll be a good way to wrap up today. So open up the coin class, which is already mostly written inside of your BlueJ project. And all it takes um, to implement an interface is to update our class header to specify that we're doing so. So we use the implements keyword. So when we're implementing an interface, it's implements. When we're subclassing another class, it's extends, but implements in this case. Comparable is the name of the interface. The comparable interface is a little bit unique in that we also need to tell it the type of the object we're comparing. Um, so it's a generic, like array list. So inside the angle brackets, we put the thing we're comparing. We want to be able to compare coins. This coin class models a coin that might be used, let's say, in a change dispenser, right? So we can create an object for a dime. We can create an object for a penny, an object for a quarter. It has a value. It's got a name. We've got some methods here, like constructors and accessors, a two-string method, all that good stuff. Once we say implements comparable coin, we just made a promise. And the Java compiler is going to enforce that promise. And right now it's saying, wait a minute, you promised that this coin class implements the comparable interface, and yet you have not implemented the compare to method. You have to do it. You said you would. We're counting on you. So let's do it. Let's implement the compare to method. So I'm going to add this at the bottom of the file. And we'll say public int compare to. And it takes one parameter of type coin, which I'll call other, like the other object we're comparing. Um, and then we can implement this. So you, hopefully you remember from the string class, we're going to either return a value greater than zero, less than zero, or equal to zero. So we can say if this dot value, all we care about is the value of the coin, is greater than other dot value, return one. I just picked one arbitrarily. We could have returned 43. Doesn't matter as long as it's a value greater than zero. Else if this dot value is less than other dot value, return negative one. Again, negative one is arbitrary. It could be any negative integer. Could have returned negative 101. If it's not greater and it's not less than, they must be equal, so return zero. That's got to be zero. Value is a private instance variable, uh, but we are inside the coin class. So not only can we directly reference value for this object, we can reference value for any other coin object, including the one referenced by the other 
parameter variable. The reason why compare to has this behavior where it just wants an integer greater than zero or less than zero is it lets us write some more flexible code. We could have, we could replace all of this. This is easier to understand, but we could have replaced all of this with a single line of code that says something like this. We could subtract this dot value from other dot value, multiply it by hundred, cast it to an int. If this dot value is greater than other dot value, that's will always result in a positive integer. And if this dot value is less than other dot value, that will always result in a negative integer. So being able to write more efficient code like this is why compare to has the behavior it has. So we could replace the above code with this, but I'm gonna leave it here in our notes, but comment it out so everything compiles. That's all it takes to implement an interface. One method, not so bad, okay? A good question is, why would we bother? Why don't we just write our own compare to method? Why do we bother with implements comparable? And that's what we'll focus on at the start of class tomorrow.